Hey everybody and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. We're going to kick off a new video series today that I hope should be pretty exciting for all of you. Um, I've got five videos planned in this series and I'm pretty excited to tackle the topics. We're going to do a deep dive into everything that we know about the upcoming Wheel of Time television show. From the history of the, the film rights to what we know about the showrunners and some fairly detailed predictions on what will be different from the books, eventually mapping out how each season is going to go. Before we start the video, I want to go ahead and throw up a spoiler warning. This video will have a spoiler rating of green, meaning that there will be no spoilers of any kind in the video, so feel free to watch even if you have not watched the series. We will be talking very generally about the series as a whole, so other than a few names here and there, nothing is going to be spoiled for you. So we're gonna split this video into four sections. First, we're gonna take a dive into the history of the Wheel of Time series on its way to becoming a television show and let everyone know how we got to the current point that we're currently at. Second, we'll go over everything that we know about the show so far at this point, from the showrunners, the writers, blurbs about the series from the production company, everything that we know about the production. In the third section, we're going to go over some concerns and challenges about adapting a series the size of The Wheel of Time, and hit on some general points about what the showrunners are going to need to overcome to make The Wheel of Time translate well to the television screen. And lastly, I'll lay out in detail the other videos that you should expect in this series. So let's go ahead and dive on it. The Wheel of Time series, it's itself was first published in 1990 when The Eye of the World first hit bookstores around the country. This was quickly followed up with The Great Hunt being released in the same year, The Dragon Reborn in 1991, The Shadow Rising in 1992, The Fires of Heaven in 1993, Lord of Chaos in 94, Crown of Swords hitting bookstores in 1996 followed by The Path of Daggers in 1998. In 1999, the Wheel of Time video game was released by Legend Entertainment. It was a first-person shooter game that was not incredibly successful, selling about 30,000 copies, but Game Spies lists the game as one of the top 10 most underrated games of all time. This was the first appearance of the Wheel of Time outside of book media. Robert Jordan quickly followed up A Path of Daggers with Winner's Heart being released in 2000. At this point in the series, there were nine books, and Team Jordan, which is how we're going to refer to Robert Jordan's management team and his publishers from here on, were approached by NBC and signed a tentative deal for a miniseries about the first book, The Eye of the World. The miniseries was never aired or produced, as by the time they were ready to get the details worked out, there were some changes in the executive team at NBC, and the executives behind the deal were no longer there. So they kind of shelved that project. In 2000, in 2003, book 10 of the series, Crossroads of Twilight, was released and quickly hit number one on the New York Times bestseller list. The series at this point was immensely popular and still without a solid movie or television deal, something that Team Jordan was trying to remedy. In 2004, Robert Jordan signed a deal with Red Eagle Entertainment LLC to advance the series in other media. The deal included the rights to The Wheel of Time in film, television, video games, and comic books. In what seemed a promising start, Red Eagle Entertainment announced in March of 2005 that they had partnered with Dobbel Brothers to produce graphic novels based on the New Spring novel. In September of 2005, the first and second issues were released and both of them immediately sold out. At the same time in 2005, Knife of Dreams was released and again went straight to number one on the New York Times bestseller list. Things seemed to be moving along nicely until June of 2006, when Red Eagle Entertainment announced that they were going to have to stop production of the graphic novels due to a disagreement with Dobble Brothers. Both Red Eagle and the Dobble Brothers blamed each other for the problem, but the good news is that later in the same month, Red Eagle was able to reverse their decision as they found a different publisher and started publishing the graphic novels again. But this is where we start to see major problems. In August of 2007, Robert Jordan publicly announced his displeasure with Red Eagle as they had not followed through with any of their promises. Up to this point, they had been promising a major motion picture adaptation, but nothing had come from it. Robert Jordan reportedly had been pressuring them to adapt the series into a television show rather than a movie, but Red Eagle was insistent on a movie. Robert Jordan basically said in his statement that he couldn't wait for the rights to expire from Red Eagle and he wasn't going to help them create anything. 
Robert Jordan passed away one month later due to complications with his amyloidosis, a blood and heart disorder that he had been battling since 2006. In August of 2008, Universal Pictures acquired the rights to create a major full-length feature film based on the Eye of the World. Red Eagle Entertainment announces that in this partnership there would be a minimum of three movies created and that they would attach video games to each of these movies. EA is announced to be on board with these games as well, all of which gave great hope to the franchise as a AAA game publisher was on board as well as a movie studio. However, all of this was just PR essentially as there was no funding for any of the games and EA had only agreed to publish a completed game, not finance it. The movie never materialized and the games were never made due to lack of funding. So from this point we hear nothing from Red Eagle Entertainment until 2012 they announce a new set of games based on mobile platforms but asked fans for money for the development of the games. They started a Kickstarter campaign with a $450,000 goal, but the fans at this point were basically done with Red Eagle Entertainment and their promises. The Kickstarter campaign raised a mere $2,900, and the mobile game was never made either. Red Eagle Entertainment essentially goes silent for the next few years. The deal that Red Eagle Entertainment had made with Team Jordan was set to expire on February 11, 2015, if there was no meaningful progress or aired content based on the series. To keep the rights, Red Eagle Entertainment rushed into production a 30-minute pilot based on the prologue of Eye of the World called Winter Dragon. I'll have that link down in the description below. Despite starring Billy Zane, the pilot episode was very low quality and clearly thrown together at the last minute. It was aired at 1.30 a.m. on FXX. There was no announcement and no advertising, and this prompted Harriet McDougall, Robert Jordan's widow, to announce that she had no idea that this pilot was even being made and was done without her blessing. This prompted Red Eagle Entertainment to sue Harriet. The lawsuit was later dismissed in 2015. On April 29, 2016, Harriet McDougall announces that the legal issues have been resolved and that a TV series is actually in development. Almost exactly a year later, on April 20th of 2017, Sony Pictures Television is announced to be handling the adaptation and Rafe Judkins is announced to be the head writer and executive producer. In February of 2018, Amazon Studios announces that it had struck a deal with Sony to co-develop the series and it would be aired on Amazon, with Rafe Judkins as the showrunner. In October of 2018, the series is officially greenlit for production, and since then we've seen a few hires for the writing team and a few glimpses from Rafe into the scripts. So what do we know about the show so far? Well, we know that it will be run and produced by Rafe Judkins, with a credit going to Red Eagle Entertainment as well, but they seem to not be in the picture other than just having their name attached. So what do we know about Rafe Judkins? Well, Rafe was a contestant on season 11 of Survivor in 2005. After Survivor, he moved to LA and began a career in screenwriting. He is credited for writing a few episodes of the third season of the show Chuck, and then moved on to write for Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. He was also then announced to take the Wheel of Time in 2017. We know that Rafe is a huge Wheel of Time super Super fan, and everything that we've seen from him at this point says that he's going to do the series justice. He maintains a fairly active dialogue with the Wheel of Time community, primarily on Twitter with both his personal Twitter account and the Wheel of Time Writer's Room Twitter account. I have linked both of those in the description below as well. He has since brought on three writers that we know of, all Wheel of Time super fans as well, Sarah Nakamura, Celine Strong, and Amanda Kate Schumann. We have received tentative titles for the first two episodes of the first season, titled Leave Takings and Shadows Waiting, respectively. For those that have read the series, this can give a tiny glimpse into the pacing of the story, but we'll get into that in another video. We have also received a blurb from Amazon Studios and a brief description about the plot of the series, portraying Moraine as the main character. We don't know that this is actually the direction that they're going to take, but this is certainly an interesting take, if true. My guess is that either one of two things is going on here. Either one, the person writing the blurb was just not very well versed in the series, or they're trying to disguise who the true main character of the series is in the blurb. They could also be trying to feature a female lead before production. I guess we'll find out more uh, as more information is released about the series. Now that we know how we got to this point, and a bit about those that are making the series, Let's talk about some of the challenges that exist in developing a television series with the scale that The Wheel of Time has. The series is massive, scaling 15 books with many cultures in a very robust magic system that is a major part of the story. It will not be a small task to make this series visually appealing and fit within the confines of a television show. In adapting a series of this size and scope, there are a few obvious challenges. First among them is cutting content. There are 15 books in the series, and although Robert Jordan is known for having a long-winded and very descriptive writing style. That is quite a bit of material to try to condense 
into a television series. Even the most successful television series have never made it past typically eight or nine seasons. So trying to condense the content will inevitably lead to characters, even entire plot lines being cut from the story. While none of us wants to see this, nevertheless, it's a reality of production. Even the Lord of the Rings stories were forced to cut major characters and stories while trying to turn one long novel into three full-length feature films that were more than three hours long. I will be making a video in this series detailing the plots and characters I believe will be cut from the show, but this is clearly a major challenge to adaptation. In addition to changing the plot and cutting characters, another major challenge will be depicting some of the elements of the story in a believable way. Game of Thrones, the most popular fantasy television adaptation to this point, benefits from a soft magic system, and the magic itself not being a major part of the story. And because of this, the magic doesn't look cheesy, and the show keeps its gritty feel. Wheel of Time is very dependent on the magic system as a part of the story. Channeling and the way it is depicted on screen is going to be a major part of whether the show succeeds or not. How do they show weaves? Do they show them? How do you show weaves that only some of the characters can see? What does weaving look like? Additionally, do you employ CGI for Shadow Spawn, or do you use conventional effects? Will you build sets for the major cities and locations, or will you just use CGI? Another major decision will be the tone of the series. Will it be gritty and dark, or will it have more of a PG-13 element to it? How will the show handle sex and nudity? What about swearing? Robert Jordan essentially created his own system of curse words for the novel. Will this translate well to the small screen? Will it sound cheesy? These are just a few of the challenges facing Rafe Judkins and the rest of the team. I am going to address each of these issues in further depth in another video in this series, but to suffice to say, everything that we have seen from Rafe so far has indicated his desire to do the fandom proud. I think the biggest factor that will affect all of this will be the budget that the show receives. Game of Thrones was one of the most expensive television shows ever produced, and it will require at least that amount of money to do Wheel of Time justice, as the scope of the series is actually greater. We're going to end this video here, but I want to let all of you know what to expect in the coming videos in the series. We're going to be exploring a number of the questions I brought up in this video over the next few installments, with all of it culminating in a synopsis of the exact scenes I believe we will get an entire episode by episode breakdown of the entire series. I want to leave you with this question to answer down in the comments below. Are you excited for the television series? Please tell me why or why not in the comments below. And if you are liking the content and you want to see more of this, please make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel as it really helps me keep making uh, wheel time content. Hey, until the next time, everybody. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do. Mistress up above, slipping on the rope of blue. She prances down the staircase, a fancy us a free crying. Tinker, oh dear, Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?